In this series, we're going to be looking at tabular model development and analysis services, which encompasses a few different technologies, but one of the uh, fundamental and underlying architectures that we need to understand first is the BI semantic model and what is the BI semantic model. Fundamentally, the purpose of the BI semantic model or BISM is to create one data model for all end user experiences. So rather than uh, having every application and every um, reporting technology have to read underlying basic information and then put together data models. And by data models, we mean maybe the way tables relate to the, the calculations that we use in business like gross margins and profit percentages and, and so on. We, if we build all of that intelligence into the model, then every one of our end user accessed applications can reuse all of that intelligence and, and all that modeling. Uh, effort that went in. So the BISM is a structure to create that kind of a consumable model. So the BISM has three basic components. The first is the data model itself and you can think of the data model as the data as it's organized for end users. So this this isn't the raw data that's coming out of a transactional system. It's It's probably not even the data as it's stored in a data warehouse but it's something that's more intelligent than that that's really put together so that end user applications like Excel can read it and understand it and present it to, uh, to the users in a logical way. The second piece is the business logic. So once, once we've put together the data elements into a logical format and made it easy to understand, we can add logic to that. So th those might be uh, calculations like um, ratios and percentages. It might be uh, time th time calculations like year-to-date numbers and month-to-date numbers and year-over-year -year and so on. So, um, so there's a, a lot of intelligence that we can really put into that model that goes beyond what we might just have with the uh, an ent entity that we might just have with a, a regular database. And the third component is data access. So in data access, we, we are pulling data out of its original source and putting it into our data model and applying the business logic to it. So we have these three uh, basic elements of, of the semantic model. And next we'll look at how those elements fit in the overall architecture. And at, at the bottom of this architecture, we have the source of the data. And, and that's what really what we're calling our data access. So the BISM is designed so that uh, we can pull data out of relational databases as well as basic transactions, files, web services, and pull this all together into the model for our users to use. And that's a powerful thing if you think about it because typically we'll give users access to databases, but then they have to go and worry about bringing in all these other ancillary things that aren't in the database themselves. BISM lets us do that for them. And then on the output side of that, we have the presentation of our data model with all the, the business logic to end user applications. And those might be Excel and reporting services, custom applications, Power Pivot, and so on. So the BI semantic model is really designed to bring in data, service applications, and do a lot of the intelligence in the middle. The way that we actually deploy that is uh, using analysis services. And there are, in the SQL 2012 environment, a couple of different ways to deploy analysis services. So we, we have the traditional, I'm going to call it multi-dimensional cube environment, which uses MDX as the language to implement business logic and queries. And the data access is uh, MOLAP, which is multi-dimensional online application processing. It's a mouthful, so it's just a MOLAP. MOLAP is a way of pulling that data out of the source data and um, making a cached copy of that, which is which yields very high performance for for users because it's already been indexed and optimized. Rollap is a relational OLAP and that, that refers to making relational queries at the time that the data model requests the data. This uh, has some real-time aspects to it that can be very useful. It also performs um, typically is not as performant in the average application, although it can be made to perform with a significant tuning effort. It can be made to perform as, as well or better than MOLAP in, in certain scenarios. The new way of deploying this semantic model is in a, what we call a tabular format. And tabular refers to tables, so it's as, as we get into the tabular design a little bit more, we'll find that the way that you interact with the model is, is more like related tables and less like multidimensional cubes. Um, so we, we call that tabular. It has a querying language and, and a business rule language as well that's called DAX, Data Access Expressions. DAX is, is, is different than MDX. Um, the only thing they really have in common is the X at the end. Um, there's, there's quite a 
quite a bit of difference in syntax between the two. Each language has its strengths, and um, we'll talk more about that in the future. Vertipak is, um, we'll, we'll be talking about that later, but Vertipak more or less corresponds to MOLEP. It's a caching uh, data access mechanism. Direct query is more or less corresponds to ROLAP. It's a way to access data from a relational store at the time that the model asks for the data. So that's our, our overall architecture. What is special about this model? Why do we bother doing it? Why not just put data into the relational databases and let the users figure this stuff out on their own? I think the most important aspect of this is that the model helps us to hide the complexity from end users. If we can hide complexity of the underlying data that's in the data sources, the more that we can do that, the more uh, readily users will use the data and, and really extract more value from it. And second is tools like Excel can read the model and know how to display the data. If we only surface tables, then um, the, there will be significantly more work in Excel to extract data, store it in Excel, try to relate it with VLOOKUPs and so on. The, the, the BISM model allows Excel just to read the model and use it. We do have uh, various structures we want to give to users like hierarchies and, and other things that we'll get into but uh, the model is where we can store this hierarchy data. Relational databases don't really know about hierarchies. We have foreign keys but um, you know that's only the most rudimentary way to express a hierarchy. Um, a, 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 a semantic model has explicitly defined hierarchies that uh, directly uh, correlate into uh, visual elements within and user applications. We can also incorporate um, attributes of, of things that are images and fonts and um, uh, typical font sizes and so on that, that you just don't find in underlying data sources that we can put into a semantic model. Uh, flexible naming measures and dimensions, it, it really goes along with hiding data complexity, but the, the model lets us rename things for users in ways that make more sense to them. So rather than you know having a uh, you know, six character seemingly random uh, column name we can actually give that that column within the model a name like customer identifier or something like that and uh, we can build into the model complex formula so gross margin isn't really that a complex formula but if you think about how this is typically implemented in a uh, reporting and business intelligence environment without some kind of a model it's, it's implemented in the end user applications and it's implemented over and over and over and you know we hope it's implemented correctly every time it's implemented in every report where it's used but the reality is it might not be um, the, the model lets us take calculations like this and embed it right into uh, the, the model so the applications will see it. And then finally automatic ag aggregation. So ag aggregating data is sometimes that's what it's all about. We want to get the you know the sum or we want to get the gross margin for you know the region sliced by the um, by the product. And uh, the, the BISM models allow these aggregations to happen automatically. So users don't have to think about okay this is a ratio. How do I do a ratio when I aggregate it? Um, you know we really remove that responsibility from the user by putting it into the semantic model.